All right, what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today we're working on my 1997 Subaru Impreza that I got for 125 bucks. If you haven't seen the previous videos on this car, I'd recommend checking them out and I'll make sure to leave a link above. Now where we previously left off on this vehicle is I announced that I wanted to turn this into a battle wagon. So what that entails is basically lifting the car, putting some bigger tires, and accommodating this car for off-road terrain because I would love to make this sort of like an adventure vehicle. Something where I could go snowboarding in the winter time as well as go up in the mountains and go camping in the summer. I'm really excited. But before I, we start tearing this thing apart and replacing it with the Forester struts that I got, I want to take it on one last drive with the original suspension that has 215,000 miles on it. All right, now getting behind the wheel of the Impreza wagon, it drives really nice. And yesterday I had the pleasure of driving this around on back roads and taking it on the highway for the first time and it didn't give me any issues at all. But with any car that has 215,000 miles, things are, you know, to be expected when it comes to issues. Like the fact that it does leak quite a bit of oil. It's either the valve cover gaskets or the cam seals that need to be replaced. It rides pretty well, it goes straight, stops, goes, turns. I mean, everything that you would want from a reliable vehicle. You know, with that, there's a little bit of noise coming from the back brakes and also the front right strut sounds like it's just completely gone. You know, not a problem for us since we're gonna be replacing that stuff. And I mean, hey, the AC's working right now and I'm just cruising along. I would not mind driving this car every single day. Like, seriously, it's a very nice place to be. Let's get this thing back to the shop and start tearing it apart. It's always spiders. God. And just to give you guys an update on the card, there are some things that I did off camera, like carefully reading the instructions on how to install the bug deflector, making sure to spill hot oil all over myself. Ugh. Hot. God damn, that's hot. Oh. But now that those nightmares are all out of the way and you didn't really have to see that, it's like it never happened, right? So anyways, let's take this apart. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna do the fronts because those are gonna be much easier than the rears. So this is what we're working with. So all we really need to do is take off these two 19 millimeter bolts and have a box in on the other end to hold it. So I need to take off these bolts here. So I'm just gonna spray a little bit of penetrating oil to make sure that they come off smoothly because it seems like a lot of stuff under here has not been touched in a really long time. Wow, that went a lot smoother than expected. So here's the original strut. Looks like it's been there forever. And now this is the one off the Forester. And as you can see, I tried to lay them down the same so that we can confirm that we're gonna be putting them up correctly. So you wanna make sure that this lines up at the bottom so that we know where the brake line is. We see on the Forester, it's in the same exact spot. So this is the correct way to put it on. Ah. 
So unfortunately, since I had to take off the sway bar to get to this, the end link's just kind of hanging here right now. So what I'm gonna do in the meantime is just remove it. Get out of the way. Now I'm just gonna tighten these ones up on the top and we should be good to go. Since there's no way to really secure this brake line now, I need to find a way to secure it and I think I know just the thing. Okay, so I just finished double checking my work on that one side and now I'm gonna work on the other side. So let me just finish that up real quick and we could even take it out for a spin real quick just with the fronts. It'll look like it's doing a wheelie, but I think it'll be kind of fun. So I'll see you guys in a sec. Holy smokes, <laughs> look at the front, that's insane. The wheel gap is just unbelievable. In comparison to the back, like look at the difference. <laughs> All right, let's take this thing around the block. I'm, I'm really curious as to how it drives now because now we had to disconnect the sway bar links. So there's no sway bar and with the higher suspension, it might be really wallowy, but I mean, that's not too big of a deal. I know this is only half of the struts on right now, but it feels really good. I thought the sway bar was going to ruin the handling of the car, but an old Impreza, it's not going to feel like a race car or anything. It really gets the job done. I mean, you could see the difference in the height in comparison to the back. And with a good set of tires, it's going to look awesome. Alright, let's swap out those rears. So I thought I'd give you a quick comparison side by side of the Impreza strut on the left and on the right is the Forester strut. And they're both lined up at the bottom, but you can see the difference in height when it comes to the top up here. What we need to do is we need to take off this cover and this is going to be our template to know where to drill. Now after taking the cover off, you can see that Subaru even marks it, so it says that this is out. And what we want to do is we want to line this up at the top of the strut tower inside the car. So now after inspecting this with the strut out, we can see how far off it is when we place this on top. Now I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this, but you see how they don't line up? in each of the holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take down a file and make sure to mark everything with the Sharpie first before I start just going to town. And then that should give us enough clearance to put the new strut in.
Okay. All right, we're finally able to get that rear strut in. That was actually kind of a nightmare. Mostly just due to the fact that there was so much filing that needs to be done. I thought it was just gonna be one spot where I needed to file, but I took like a pretty big chunk off of everything. But now we need to do the other corner. So let me just finish up this corner over here and I'll show you guys what the cars look like after it's all done. So I just pulled the car out of the shop and I brought it down to where we first started the video. And are you guys ready for this? I'm like still in shock. So you guys have to bear with me a little bit as I talk about this car, but here, I'll just show you guys. <laughs> it just transformed the way the car looks. I think it came out so awesome. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure to comment down below, but this is just with Forrester Springs and struts. You get about a two and a half inch lift. And when you compare the Impreza to an actual Forrester, the difference is uncanny in the ride height, which is so cool. Now this is the ultimate test. Let's see. And the fronts. Just wanted to take you guys for a quick spin in this thing. Immediately when you get in it, you just feel the height. It doesn't feel like you're in a in a huge car, but I mean for a compact wagon like this, you can really tell the difference. And it just feels so rad. And it's smooth, there's no bottoming out or anything like that, and it drives great. I would even say it drives better than before. And I was a little skeptical too, because I thought the alignment was all gonna get messed up, but I, I mean I can let go of the wheel when I'm going straight and it's completely fine. Like right now, just hands off the wheel and it's going. Man, <laughs> just unbelievable. This car has really came a long way and I think that's what makes it kind of special. All right, let's go back. I'll see you guys in a sec. All right guys, and thanks for watching. And make sure to stay tuned for the next video because last night I actually picked up the new set of wheels and tires for this thing. And there's gonna be a little more suspension mods on the way and then I just, I'm itching to just take this out on a trail or somewhere in the outdoors before the summer ends. And yeah, more content on the way, so make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.